Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Mike here with Growing in Grace, and this is part three of our three-part series on the church. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have explained why we need church in general. Mm -hmm. We talked about why we should commit ourselves to a particular church. And then sitting in my lap right here, you've given me six questions to ask uh, to help us pick a church. Mm -hmm. you know, what to look for in a church is what we're asking today. Yes. Now, so six questions, what to look for, how to find the perfect church. Is that right? Uh, yes. So I, I would begin by saying there are no perfect churches. Uh, but with that said, just as there are no perfect churches or perfect people, there are churches that are healthier than others. There are churches that are going to help you grow in Christ more than others. Because yes, there are a lot of subjective things about churches, the size of the the church itself, the building, it's in a traditional steeple church or in a strip mall. Or the preferential age. things. Yes, yeah, superficial or preferential things. But there are objective realities that are good and that we are to look for that will work for our spiritual good and growth. They help in the kind church. of define the, the playing field for us a little bit. Absolutely. So, question number one Am I being equipped or entertained? Yeah. What am, do you mean by that? Well, I, Am I being equipped or entertained? I mean, the uh, the aim of this service when you step in, is it primarily to basically make sure that you come back again next Sunday or to help you prepare for the week and living for Christ and becoming like Christ um, in between Sundays? And I think they're a very different aim, but from the surface they can almost seem the same. But we know from Ephesians 4.12 that really the job of pastors and spiritual leaders is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, which means that the people in the pew are not... Uh, simply spiritual consumers. They're actually the soldiers mm -hmm. that are meant to be equipped to carry out the work of ministry. And so if people are never being challenged, they're never being um, learning new things, they're never growing in their mm -hmm. spiritual walk over time, then really that service is not doing what it's meant to do. Yeah, so really we're asking, can I grow spiritually yes. here? Yes. Is this a place where I can conceivably grow mm -hmm. in my walk with Christ? Am I growing spiritually or am I simply being spoon-fed? And mm -hmm. I, to your point you made earlier, this does not mean that it needs to be boring and dry. Mm -hmm. In fact, I hope it sh I hope it won't be, but it, it does mean that the main goal is not to be merely entertained. Yeah, yeah which I think leads li nicely into your second question, yeah. which is, is God's Word central? Uh, so if God's Word is going to be central to a service, then the, the aim and the function of that is going to be to equip the saints, right? Yeah, and, and the reality is that most services are going to include, so if you're asking, okay, what does this mean as God's Word central? Most mm -hmm. services are going to have some, some Bible sprinkled in there, at least hopefully mm -hmm. at some level. But the, I guess the question I would ask is, it, is it the main course or is it like a seasoning or an appetizer or a side dish? Is, is the Word of God central, and are we getting enough of God's Word to do us real spiritual good? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Man of God or woman of God equipped for every good work. So the way that we are equipped for the good works that God's prepared in advance for us to do is through the Word of God. And if it's not central in the services, um, then you are never going to be equipped in the way God would have you. Yeah, so we just want to sing uh, the Billboard Top 50 songs, and then once we get to the sermon, we want to make sure that the Word of God is, is there. In the no, sermon. no, if we've got together, let's say we've got an hour together, we want to make sure that full hour together, or however long we have together, is built around that Word. So we want to be singing the Word, we want to be praying the Word, then we want to be preaching the Word. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have uh, a disjointed service where we're talking about a lot of different other things, and then we get to the Gospel, and then we get to God's Word. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Number three is the gospel clear. Yes. So the central message of Christianity, the central tenet of our faith is the gospel. Mm -hmm. Paul says in Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to all who believe. So that means for us that if the gospel is not central in our services, it's not explicitly clear in our gatherings, um, it's going to tend to be assumed and it's going to tend to be neglected, and the power of God is, is not actively engaged through that gospel. So we want to just make sure that the gospel is clear and central in our gatherings. Yeah. Do you preach the gospel every week? You should preach the gospel every week because we have nothing. Do I preach it perfectly every week? No. I fail often. But the gospel being clear is something that we want to make at least strive for every week. Yeah. Does this church preach Jesus? Uh, am I going to this church for several weeks and never really hearing much about uh, my sin, mm. Jesus' offering on behalf of my sin? 
Uh, the salvation that God offers us in Christ, is that is that present? Is it absent? Uh, those are questions that we need to ask when Absolutely. we're going to church. Absolutely. Number four, what do they believe? Yeah, and this is, this is a really important one because as uh, Christians and churches increasingly are moving away from even including a statement of faith. Um, I've heard people say doctrine divides. Well, unfortunately, I, I do think sometimes do doctrine does divide, but sometimes it needs to. I mean, you look at the early church in uh, Acts 2, uh, 42 through 47, they gathered around the apostles' teaching as a church. We're to gather around the truths of God. That's what gives us our unity. And we really must be a people that are uh, really clear on what we believe because what we believe really determines our destiny. Yeah, yeah. So what do they believe? Can I, uh, can I sit under the teaching mm -hmm. of this church? Um, you don't want to go to a church where you would just be at odds with everything in their statement of faith, assuming that they have one. Yeah, so you want to make sure that they, they are clear, and they, the leadership in the church is clear on what they believe. And then second, does it align with what you believe? Yeah, okay. Uh, number five, do I see spiritual fruit? Now, you're going to have to explain this one. All right, so I know that it's a hard thing to be able to step into a church and be able to tell whether or not we see spiritual fruit. But the reality is what I'm encouraging here is not to look merely at do these people look like me? Because regardless of whether what they look like on the outside, if you can see the spirit at work in these people, meaning are, is this a, a gathering that is defined by love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. patience, kindness, and some of these things you can't see immediately the first time you visit. It's yeah. not that they, yeah. you go in and you leave and nobody says hi to you, meaning the Spirit of God is absent in that church. I, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am yeah. saying is that over time you should sense the work of the Spirit of God in the people's lives, and you should be looking for that. Don't look at the fact that, do these people dress like me, look like me? Ask the question, do these people have the Spirit of God in them, and am I seeing it at work? Because if so... That's going to be for your spiritual good and growth. Yeah, we want to be slow to rush to judgment. Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard some churches encourage visitors to to go to it to go to their church for maybe six weeks in a row. Yeah, uh, I think that's probably a good practice. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but you're right. You want to see that congregation with spiritual eyes rather than just merely external and physical. Uh, do they have the same interests as me? Do we share affinities? You want to ask is uh, is this congregation marked by spiritual fruit? That's a good question. Yeah. Number six, can I commit to this church? Can I commit? We, we should <laughs> commit to a church. We covered that last week. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't just kind of uh, pick and choose churches based off of what they offer us in, in children's ministry or music preferences or this or that. But uh, explain why we should ask, can I commit to this church? Well, at the end of the day, the, the way a church is going to do you the most spiritual good is when you commit to them. Mm -hmm. It's loving to them. It's loving your own soul. It's loving the Lord to commit to a local body. But the reality is that uh, that ability to commit is dependent upon some factors that, uh, one, just distance and pro you know proximity to the church. If you live an hour away, it's going to be very difficult over the long haul to commit to that church. So you yeah. want to look for a church that is geographically close to where you live. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's not available, but if possible, you want to try to commit to where a church you can get to easily. Can I be around the can people? You, can you be around the people? That's yeah. a very practical yeah. question. Second, service times. Obviously, if you mm -hmm. can't meet when they are gathered. Do I work when they meet? Then, then you know, that they may be a great church, but it may be mm -hmm. not the church for you because you can't commit to those people. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, it's an issue of can, can I submit to the leadership of that church? Mm -hmm. Because part of a church is defined by the leadership. And if you don't like the leadership, don't like the direction they're going, then even if you like this particular ministry or that particular Sunday school class, um, you ultimately are not going to be able to be one with the people be hard. because you don't, you don't agree or align with the leadership. So that's, that's a, 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 these are some important practical questions we need to ask ourselves. Yeah, so you want to find a church body where you can happily commit to the people, happily commit to follow the leadership, uh, and where you see God at work, where you think you can grow. Yeah. Uh, so just six questions, let me review them real quick, okay. and then we're out of here. Uh, am I being equipped or entertained? Is God's Word central is the gospel clear? What do they believe? Do I see spiritual fruit? And can I commit to this church? We hope this is helpful for you. Uh, just six questions to ask to help you find the perfect church. And uh, we'll be back hopefully next week, Lord willing. And we're going to talk about the gospel. Because uh, I think that's important that we get that right. What is the gospel? So we'll see you then.